All right, guys, today's video, I'm pretty excited about it. It's an older Bob Vila video on installing a fence on a slope site. I remember as a kid growing up, I watched Bob Vila a lot. I still reference him a lot uh, when using the phrase, if you're not a professional, hire a professional. So let's get into this and see what Bob Vila has to say about installing a fence on a slope site. Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome to the show. We're remodeling a little 85-year-old house here, and we've been working in First and foremost, red shirt, so similar to an orange shirt. It's a cousin to an orange shirt. In the basement, creating a family room today. We're putting in a half bathroom with a very unusual toilet and a laundry room in that area. On the outside of the house, we're building a white cedar fence that incorporates some very unusual storage features, and we're cutting down a door to install. That's an interesting fence style that we got a peek of there. So it looked, it was a pre-built uh, which is common uh, here in the States. You, the guys in different regions use pre-built fence panels, uh, but the rails look like either a round or a half round rail that was doweled. Uh, I'm pretty interested to see what that's about. Stick around. It's good to have you with us. There's an orange shirt. Another orange shirt. It looks close to orange to me. I'm liking Bob Vila's choice of colors here. Another orange shirt. Another orange shirt. I know I like this guy. All right, the major landscape improvement that we're doing uh, to the side and the back of the house involves fencing, and Jay Tarantafilo is with us from Architectural Hi, Fence. Uh, this is all white cedar that you use, right? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Wh why is that the best choice for this kind of fencing? It's uh, a wood that's a northern species. It's local, mm -hmm. and it's... Uh... So, that's inter interesting. They're calling it uh, white cedar, which we still hear we still hear about white cedar in the States. We hear a lot about incense cedar, uh, which... I think people are using those two terms uh, together or in place of each other, white cedar and incense cedar. My understanding is they are different, uh, but a lot of times you'll hear them called one one way or the other. Impervious to rot. Yeah, it's long-lasting. Long-lasting, yes. Yeah. Now, one thing that I want to ask is I've always thought that mixing concrete in, uh, in a hole and putting it in a hole surrounding a wood post of any sort is a bad idea. Doesn't it promote rot? It does if it's done improperly. There is a correct way of doing it. What we do is we set a post to approximately 36 inch depth. Mm -hmm. We'll throw approximately six inches of material dirt back in the hole. Of dirt. And then we'll add the concrete. That way it doesn't create a total seal. It allows the water to pass through the wood. So that's interesting. Uh, so what we've talked about this before when setting post in regards to con uh, setting post and concrete in regards to rot. They're putting material dirt back in the bottom of the hole before they put concrete with the idea that it'll let uh, water seep out below the uh, concrete. Between the wood and the concrete. And the concrete is there for stiffness. Stiffness, stability, and remains the elevation of the post. So the, the key is not to totally encase that post. post in concrete. Correct. Because if you did that, you would be trapping the moisture in the wood. Yes, sir. And that accelerates the rotting process. Yes. I got you. All right. Well, what what are we creating right here? This almost looks like shower stalls at the beach club here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is in a sense. Uh, basically, Sarah came to us and our homeowner, your homeowner. She said that a uh, very tight site, and she w wished she could have a shed, uh, a planting area, mm -hmm. and a uh, trash bin. So I says, "Oh, we can give that to you. We have uh, a spot on the side." And this is basically what this creates. So essentially, you've got the fence going along the property line, and you're putting up these little wing walls these or wing, wing fences. Walls, yeah, yeah. And we'll have an enclosure for trash. Let's talk about what you've... That's interesting that he created uh, different compartments, different areas for shed and garden and storage, uh, simply by creating what we'd call like a wing wall. It looks like, oh, I don't know, a three or four foot wing wall there. It's a nice use of the space. Already done, though, because when you got here, you had to deal with kind of a rough site. What's the first thing you had to, to work on? When we came here first, Bob, we had, um, there was an existing chain link fence that was up in the back line with uh, some heavy growth. So we had to come in, cut the growth, and also remove the chain link fence. What about the digging on the site? Is it very rocky? Isn't there some ledge around here? There's quite a bit of rock here, uh, as a matter of fact. We've struck quite a bit of rock in the holes as we're digging. Mm -hmm. Loose material and also some solid material. Mm -hmm. So this is obviously shot back in the day. Uh, it's it's interesting to see, you know, 
guys digging holes primarily with hand diggers and rock bars. When I was a kid coming up through the fence business, as you know, a lot of the fence guys out there share the same story. Uh, we didn't have digging machines. We didn't have augers, even the the two man pull behind augers or anything. We had rock bars and and uh, hand diggers. So pretty much all through high school, this is what was in my hands. Uh, it's it's good character building, as my dad would tell you. Uh, these posts have to be dug to a thirty six inch depth. So we find it quite frequently. That's is, why the cement also helps. Is the depth uh, because of the, the frost heaves that we encounter in, in cold climates? It's for the frost as well as stability of the fence. Six foot high fence needs a certain amount in the ground. It's generally two thirds of the height must be set in, in the ground. Two thirds, the two thirds above and one third below? Correct. Gotcha. Okay, and what about the actual panels? These are made back in your shop and then you install them on site. Yes, sir. So that's that's interesting. So it look it does look like half round um, half round cross rails. Now, one thing I'm noticing here, guys, though, is that the top of these pickets are already gray. Um, so I'm guessing they built these panels quite a while ago and then just stored them. So they they probably pre build a lot of panels. So not specifically for one project or the other, just build a bulk amount of panels. I'm not sure our customers would be super happy having having panels on site that were already uh, already wearing or weathering on top. Uh, you've got a sloped site. How do you deal with that? Well, that's a that's an interesting question. We have to do what they call racking the sections, which basically takes a section that's built square yeah. and actually slopes the boards to make up for the difference in the elevation of the height of the ground. Okay. And you can do that even though you've got double nailing on all of these boards yeah, and so it, forth? It, they go to a certain extent. Sometimes they, they reach a point where they won't rack any further, and in that case, we have to build the panels on site. Okay. Which you've seen here. What about the caps? The caps, uh, the fence cap on the top of the fence um, is, a, is a finished piece mm -hmm. as well as it, it helps for the rain. Um, basically, we have to sometimes when you get into a position where the boards on. So one thing to note that I just saw in that cutting scene, they're using tongue and groove pickets. Probably because quite a while ago, tongue and groove was a bit more reasonably priced, but a uh, tongue and groove does a great job of making sure each and every picket is interlocked with each other, with each other, the pickets around it, uh, so that it prevents warping and twisting. Extremely racked situation, your boards stagger. Yeah. So you have to cut the top of the boards in order for this cap to fit over because there's only about a half inch dado that fits over the top. That of the fits board. on the top of it. Yeah. No, putting up fencing on a slope side has got to be the hardest job. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. All right. So most fencing has. Uh, well, they're both nice sides, but one side is clear like this, and the other side has the rails exposed. That's correct. Uh, and so how do you choose which side faces in what direction? That's up to the homeowner. There is really, unless there's some town ordinances that specify which, who gets which side. Basically, this is what we call the good side. The beauty side. The beauty side, and then the back side of course has the three horizontal rails. And what have you done here? We've done it both ways here, Bob, as a matter of fact. The rear fence, actually, we turned the good side into the homeowner. Okay. And then the sideline, we turned the rails inside the homeowner. So yeah, that's pretty common. And this is a, a piece of feedback that I see a lot here on the channel. This is going to vary regionally, depending on whether the finish side or what they're calling the beauty side faces in towards the homeowner or out towards the neighbors. Uh, typically, here in the Midwest, we would face the smooth side, the finished or beauty side out uh, so that it was a nice appearance from, you know, the all outward appearances. Uh, but in some regions, uh, I, I hear some pretty strong comments uh, that that's not the way it's done there, that they would face the finished or beauty side in towards the customer. Uh, really, it's going to depend on where in the country or where in the world you're located at. So we've gotten the beauty side to the neighbor. Correct. And the neighbor's very close to the fence. Yes. Well, it's a beautiful fence. Thank you. Yeah. Well, guys, that does it for a quick Bob Vila video on uh, building and installing a fence on a slope site. If you like the video, give it a like and let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. But until next time, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.